So this is learning outcome two, which is all about how media products are advertised and distributed. So the main things that we need to know are we've got to be able to explain the difference between the types of advertising. So there's different types that we need to know. You've got to be able to evaluate how media products are advertised. You've got to know some case studies about how things are advertised in different ways. And you may need to know how products are distributed. So how are they passed out? How are they given out to the audience? So let's start with looking at the different types of advertising. So we need to know traditional and contemporary methods and we need to understand above the line and below the line advertising. So first of all, it's quite useful if you understand the difference between marketing and distribution. So marketing is the actual advertising of a product through promotional content. So the usual methods are kind of like posters, TV adverts and trailers. Then distribution is the actual output of the product. So how do you get it so that people can actually see the product? How can they read the magazine? How can they see the movie? How can they watch the TV program? There's different ways in which you can get it out just for the audience to see. Let's start by looking at the term above the line advertising and let's try to understand what that actually means. So the main thing with above the line advertising is when mass media is used. So you don't just go, oh, there's a poster and that's it. You would look at all different types of media and how you could use it to promote a particular product. This could include the TV, could include radio adverts, could include printed products and online or the internet. So the main thing with above the line advertising is it's a term used for when it's a main, uh, a mainstream audience. So it's when the audience is big, you are trying to push it out to as many people as possible. In other words, you kind of overstep in the line. You are going above the line to advertise a product. An example could be the fact that the Skyfall trailer was shown at the Super Bowl. Now the Super Bowl has got one of the biggest audiences in the world. So when you show a trailer during one of the breaks, you are guaranteed to get a huge mainstream audience. All different types of people are going to be watching. So the advantage of using above the line advertising is obviously that you've got a huge audience and you can reach like a global reach across the world. The major disadvantage is obviously it's going to cost you a lot of money to do a campaign that's above the line. If you're using all different types of media and you're trying to hit as many people as possible, it's going to cost you a lot of money. Some movies spend over a hundred million just to advertise the release of the film. The other disadvantage of above the line advertising is you're trying to meet as many people as possible, but a lot of those people are not going to be interested in that particular product. For example, if you show, some sort of action movie in the middle of, I don't know. Probably a good example would be to show, if you show the romantic comedy in the advert break of a football match, it's probably not the most sensible place to show it because stereotypes aside, not as many women are going to be watching the football match and not, not very many men are going to be interested in a romantic comedy. So below the line advertising is basically the opposite. It's when instead of trying to meet a mainstream audience, you're looking to try and meet more of a niche audience. So you've got like a specific demographic in mind. You know the type of person that you want to buy this product or to come to see this product. So you try to use a more one-to-one -one form of advertising. Usually this could be people like with a lot less money and you've got to be a little bit clever and a little bit more kind of specific on who you want to see it. So an independent company, for example, might have a really specific audience in mind, like a horror fans of a particular age range. And they might think, right, I need to target those specifically. How can we do that? So one way you could do it is to put things that are really, really specific, like a pamphlet, give out leaflets, ask people if they're interested before you give them out. You could do competitions where it relates to something else that they might be buying. For example, um, it might be after another film, another horror film that they've seen. You could give a little competition or a promotion that relates to your film straight after it. You could also put banners or posters in particular locations that might be appropriate. So if it was, I don't know, like it was a sports movie, 
and you could put posters up in sporting places like gyms and things like that. Um, and social media, nowadays social media can be classed as below the line in some ways because the adverts can be targeted. You can set up a promotional campaign and say, I only want these people to see it. So that means that it's a bit more below the line because it's targeted demographic that you're aiming it at. So the advantages of below the line advertising are obviously it's more cost effective. You can get more bang for your buck if you like. You, the money that you are spending, it's a bit more intelligent and you put a bit more thought into it. It's more specific and targeted so you know that the people that are seeing it are going to be interested in some way. The disadvantage is obviously a lot less people are going to see it. If you make it more specific, then there's less people going to see it. And some methods of advertising are quite difficult. So sometimes it is difficult to address people face to face. So the term traditional advertising is quite an easy one, really. It just means what has been kind of going on for the long, longest time. What was always the case with advertising, what's always been the same. So the main things are that printed media, such as posters and adverts in magazines and things like that, have been going for a long, long time. Newspaper adverts and so on. The radio has been around for a long time and adverts have been traditionally shown on the radio. And TV. So TV, ever since the dawn of time, really since TV first came around, it has basically been used for adverts a lot. And it started to die down a little bit more now because of video on demand. But when you're watching live TV, you will still see a lot of advertisements. So by you doing kind of like a cross media campaign, you could use all three of those methods to advertise one product, which technically would mean that you're going above the line in most cases because you are addressing a lot more people. You're going for a mainstream audience. So the more contemporary methods, which are usually digital. So as technology's progressed, we've now expanded our advertising to the online world. And what you've got to think about is the benefits of that and what you can kind of do with it. So because everybody seems to have, well, not everybody, but most people have got more internet access and the internet has become a lot faster. It means that there's new media and new web technologies available. So multimedia, multimedia advertising has got a lot more widespread around the world. These can be in the form of like pop-up adverts on, on websites. You can get web banners such as like IMDB, big web banners coming up across the top for the latest films. You can have social media accounts, which are really beneficial for kind of below the line advertising because you can target them at specific people. And there's things like viral memes where if you create something really cleverly, People will spread it for you for free. So you're not spending any money, but people are just spreading it and spreading it and it's raising awareness of your product. With the likes of video on demand as well, you can kind of add your advertisements into those things. So you might have noticed on Amazon Prime and Netflix and things like that, adverts are starting to pop up for their products. What we really need to do is look at how these media products are actually advertised. I'm just going to look at some examples and the kind of advantages and benefits of using different methods. So printed media is when you physically print something out. So you've got like something that you can grab hold of. Could be in the form of like a poster, a leaflet, a flyer, newspaper, magazine, anything that's like printed out. Now this for advertising can be very successful and powerful in the sense that when people see it visually when they're driving the car for example if it's a bus or a billboard often the, your brain is not really thinking about much else so it's very kind of receptive to receiving new information um, when you think about how cheap it can be to put in something on the tv advert for example and also, if you're going to hand it out as like a leaflet or a flyer, then that's going to be really personal because you can kind of talk to the person as you're doing it and select who you actually give one to. I think the main thing to think about when you think of print media is the cost. So even though to us as the everyday person, it might seem like a lot to print thousands and thousands of posters out and put them everywhere. 
but when you compare it to a TV program, if you want to advertise, for example, in the middle of The X Factor on a Saturday night, that's going to cost you over a million just to advertise for 30 seconds in the middle of the adverts. Now, if you use that one million and do some printed media instead, you're going to get a lot more advertising time. It will stay there constantly. So if you think about a billboard on the side of the street, it's going to still be there at 7 a.m. It's going to still be there at 7 p.m. And it's going to get driver after driver after driver that all see them all at the same time. The disadvantage is obviously it's not quite as interesting. You don't have sound on it. You don't have moving pictures. It's not as interesting for the user. But to create awareness, the person can then go away and type in Skyfall on their phone or go on a website and type in Skyfall and then they can find out more information about it. Using the radio to advertise products is very, very kind of useful tool that still exists. Now, while not as many people listen to live radio now, they tend to kind of use digital methods. So they might use an online stream or something like that. People still listen to the radio a lot. Now, it tends to be people who are driving to work. So at a particular time in the day, it tends to be more popular than others. But also some people who work in maybe factories or in a warehouse and things like that, they will have the radio on all day long. So it's still an effective way to reach an audience with a lot of listeners. The best thing about radio is you have local radio stations. So it might be a way of using below the line advertising because you can target like a kind of niche group of people. So there's something called geo demographics, which is kind of a location of a type of person where they might live. So if you put Radio City on, whatever it's called these days, uh, Capital or something like that, that will be local radio. So the advertisements that you could put on there might be for local businesses. So it could be like for Liverpool Windows or something like that. Um, that makes it a little bit more specific so the people that are listening to it are going to be more interested. If you put an advertisement, for example, for some company that's based in London on Liverpool radio, it's not going to be very helpful for you. Good thing about radio is you, because it's got sound, obviously it can make it a little bit more interesting than printed media. You can use things called idents and jingles. These are kind of like memorable tunes that you hear on the radio. So things like um, little sing songs that, that pop up and little tunes that make you remember things a little bit more easily. So one of the ones in Liverpool is like for taxi companies, isn't it? Uh, people remember the number because it puts it into a musical little note. Um, another thing that you can do is sponsor things. So you can put like sponsors for different companies as part of like competitions and stuff on the radio. The advantage of radio as well is that it, it is a lot cheaper than the TV still. And as I said before, the main advantage is that you can direct it to local audiences. Disadvantage is not everyone listens to the radio. So I would say unless you're in a car, not a lot of people listen to the radio anymore. They will have their own music on the portable device. Another thing is the radio does seem to be popular at a specific time. So I would guess between 8 and 9 a.m is going to be one of the most popular times because people are driving to work at that time. Similarly, with between like five and six, when people are in the car at that time as well. So with TV, advertising began really early, 1954. If you've ever seen a TV show called Mad Men, it looks specifically at the rise of advertising and big um, companies that make thousands and thousands and thousands all from running advertising campaigns and a lot of them use like a TV spot to advertise something. Now with TV, they cost kind of a lot to put the advert together in the first place, but they are really good at kind of attracting attention because people just instantly respond to moving images and sound. Now with TV adverts, they're often shown in between programs. So when you've got an advertising break, People generally don't have much choice, like you might go to the toilet, you might go and make a drink or something, but you're stuck watching this TV show, aren't you? You're kind of in the middle of um, the TV programme and you've got nothing else to do. So you're kind of glued to the TV and you're watching it anyway, 
So it's a good idea to put adverts on to attract attention. Um, often the TV shows, uh, the adverts, sorry, will use kind of a star endorsement. Sometimes they might have like Beyonce advertising a perfume or something like that. So they use like an instant star that people will recognize to make their product more appealing. Another thing with TV is you can have something called product placement. So product placement is where you're watching a TV show or a film and you will see real products in that show. So it instantly like kind of raises awareness of the product, but it also might make people more interested. For example, when we were talking about Skyfall, Skyfall has James Bond using a Sony phone. It has him using a particular type of car. It has him using a particular type of razor. So all of these things are product placement. They are products placed into that product, uh, into that movie. Um, so as we said, the advantages are looking at how TV shows are more engaging. If you see an advert on a TV program, it's going to be a bit more engaging than looking at a poster. The major, major disadvantage is it costs a lot of money to make the advert and it costs a lot of money to put it onto the middle of a TV program as well. Digital methods of advertising a media product are the more contemporary methods. So obviously nowadays, more, many, many more people have got access to the internet, whether that's at home, on a computer, a tablet, or on the Wi-Fi, or whether it's on mobile internet. Now, people are constantly using the mobile phones, could be on a bus, could be in the car while they're getting taken somewhere and they're, and they're not driving. It could be when you're on a break could be when you just sat at home browsing at night or anything like that people are constantly using the devices now now the major advantage of using digital methods is if you use social media you can personalize and target who you want to see your advert so for example on this page here you can see the skyfall omega uh, link up the collaboration and this is where james bond wears this watch in the film so that is advertised on Instagram, but it's only shown to the people that might have an interest in those things. So basically your computer and your phone and everything, it records your internet access. It keeps something called cookies, which are showing your kind of patterns of behavior. And what that means is if you keep visiting websites about watches, the cookies file will display that you're interested in watches. And when you go on Instagram, the adverts that it might show you are to do with watches. It might also have information about you personally, like whether you're a male or a female. So it's not going to show you a man's watch if you're a woman. However, if you're searching for man's watches, men's watches, men's watches, it doesn't really matter if you're a woman or not, because you might be looking for your husband or your boyfriend or brother or whatever. So the best thing about digital methods are you can personalize them if you use social media another thing is that it's a lot cheaper because sometimes i mean on social media it's free unless you pay for sponsored adverts and you can have a worldwide audience so 24 hours a day people in all different parts of the world different times a day can all see something online another advantage is that if you think about it what you can majorly do with these online methods is you can do it and share it virally. So if I create a very clever advertising campaign like Ghost Stories did, for example, that can be shared and shared and shared and other people are doing your advertising job for you. So in their particular case, when they made deliberate mistake, mistakes on the poster and in the tweets and things like that, people thought it was a deliberate um, thought it was a real mistake, not deliberate, start sharing it, taking taking the mick out of them. And before you know it, it's gone viral because they're spreading it around everywhere for them. Disadvantages of digital methods is there's a big, big part of the world population that might still not have access. You've also got a lot of the elderly people might not use the internet at all. So you're missing out on that kind of whole cohort of people. And you're up against a lot of competition. So if you go on a website, your advert might not get shown because there's so many other people that want to do it as well. With Skyfall as our example, if we look at the traditional methods that have been used first to advertise it, 
Now, if you want to watch any of like the little adverts or trailers or anything like that, I'll put the links in for you in the comments so that you can see, or in the description so that you can click on them and go to see the different examples. But the traditional method that is used for movies in general is to put trailers before other movies. Now, you can, I guess, you can do this in a way to kind of choose who you want to see these trailers. So if you put the Skyfall trailer before another James Bond film, then obviously that's perfect because the audience is already kind of on the same level. If you put it before other action films and before other kind of adult-themed movies, then you're going to get the right kind of audience that are interested. If you put a trailer for Skyfall before Monsters, Inc., then you're going to get loads of kids like, what's that? And it's not really appropriate for them. So, in a way, you could argue that using some trailers could be below the line advertising because you're trying to target it at a specific person, a targeted demographic group. Another traditional method is print. So for Skyfall in particular, you could put in the cinemas, you can put the posters on the wall. So when you go to the cinema and you come out the screen, you're looking around and you'll see other posters for other movies that might be coming out. Therefore, it's like a good, sensible place to stick adverts for a film for you. Billboards, as we've mentioned previously, really good little example of where you could stick something where a lot of people are going to see it. You can also put the website that people can visit on the billboard so they can get more information. You can have posters on the side of a bus or in Skyfall's case where they had the entire bus coated with the advert. You can have magazines about film. So for example, in Total Film or Empire magazine, you might have a front cover featured in Skyfall. You might have adverts in, inside that film magazine where it's the Skyfall poster. You can have TV adverts, so you're just watching uh, X Factor or whatever, and then the breaks comes up, Skyfall with a proper trailer. You can have collaboration with other brands. So this is where you're kind of trying to use synergy and create awareness. You might use part of your own conglomerate to advertise, or it might just be paired up with another business. So in Skyfall's case, they had a lot of collaboration. They have um, things with Coke Zero, they had stuff with Heineken beer, they had stuff with Omega for the watches, Aston Martin for a car, they had a Razor of some description, can't remember which one it was. So all sorts of different collaborations for different products. Um, we've also got radio adverts. Now what they tend to do with radio adverts is they put dialogue from the movie. So you can hear like the music, you can hear the theme tune, you might hear like the odd explosion or something. And you tend to hear like some of the best lines from the film, which makes it interested as well. So examples of the more contemporary or digital methods are when Skyfall has basically set up its own website. So its own website is really useful because you can put like quick links to it. You can put the link to the website on a poster. You can put like QR codes where people can scan it in and instantly get to it. All those kind of things, that, or you can put adverts that will link to the website to give you more information. Another thing you can do is put things like the trailer that you've done for before the movies. You can put them on YouTube. You could put them on Facebook. You can put them on Instagram, short little clips. You can use social media, put the same post there as an Instagram picture or Facebook. You can create viral campaigns with other brands. So if you look at the Coke, viral campaign that we put on the video that I've just put in the description and you've got the actual website which has got all sorts of different bits of information um, example products that are coming up interviews with the cast all those kind of things that help to advertise and raise awareness sometimes in the exam it might mention something to do with enhancing traditional methods so what you've got to think of is what can you do as a traditional method and how could you use that same thing in a digital way? So if you make a poster, you could put it onto your social media account. If you make a trailer, you could put it onto your YouTube account. If you make something um, picture-wise, like some sort of advert, you can put it on in Instagram as a, a little campaign.
we've looked at all of the different methods of advertising and marketing now so you need to think about how products are distributed how are they given out how do people receive them so you've made a film you've got it you've got it on your computer how is everybody else going to see it so when we talk about distributing media products we're basically talking about how the products are delivered to the audience so how are they actually given out to them with new technology so when we're talking about digital methods of things with the new technologies available with people having a lot more internet access a lot more devices this distributing of the products is completely changing so there's this term that you might see on the exam it's called technological convergence so when to, when something converges it means to come together so a technological convergence is the coming together of technology and the best example of that is your mobile phone so if you think about mobile phones now what you can do with it instead of just being able to ring somebody you can now go online you can go onto facebook instagram um, snapchat twitter all different social media networks you can basically use it like a computer you can do work on it you can make powerpoints you can take photos you can record video you can record sound if you've got a keyboard on it you can do all sorts of different things with one device so because of that now it makes the way of distributing products very very different you've got a lot more options out there for people to use so just so you're aware of the different methods of distribution sometimes you might get a short question where you've just got to state or identify some methods so if you think about traditional we've already looked at how they're all advertised the ways that you can distribute something obviously if you make a film or a tv show you can distribute it on the television sometimes you might be able to make a version of it that might be on the radio but in general, you've got to make specific radio shows. Um, if you think about print, if you print something like some sort of article, you could stick it in a newspaper or in a magazine. If you think about DVDs and Blu-rays, if you make a film, you could stick it onto a DVD or a Blu-ray and print hundreds and hundreds of copies and give them out to people. If you make some sort of music or a radio show or a podcast you could stick it on an audio cd for the digital methods which is a lot more what we're looking into now because of the technological convergence you can think about right i could stick this on a website i could stick my whole movie on a website i could stream some audio i could stick some streaming audio into a website or i could stick it on something like spotify amazon prime music things like that the other thing you need to look at is video on demand so you've got Netflix you've got Amazon Prime you've got all these other kind of things that are starting to pop up one of the new ones is going to be Disney Plus coming out in November and that's basically like Netflix but it's going to be all of Disney content on there so that is an interesting way that you can get your content out there you could form some sort of joint venture or you could sell your product to a video on demand company Just to kind of reinforce the yeah, horizontal integration that we've done in Learning Outcome 1, it's where like a company can use, a conglomerate can use all of its subsidiary companies to try and increase the synergy to basically get as much money as possible and get the awareness of the product to a maximum. So with a little example, if you think about the film Titanic, now this is one of the most commercially successful movies ever made as in it made the most money so you think about all the different ways that they distributed the products obviously they had the cinema release when it first came out but then they also made a book version of the film they made a graphic novel which is like a kind of comic strip they made an audio cd which was all the music from the film then they released it at home so it came out on v on vhs which is the old videotapes and dvd and now it's been blu-ray as well and they also re-released it in 3D in the cinema. So there's a number of different ways the product or similar products were distributed. So many people are arguing now that we're in a digital age. We've talked about technological convergence. We're saying that basically um, your phones and things like that now can do almost anything. You don't have to have separate devices. 
so you can access content a lot more easily there's high speed internet now so it's much easier to stream video it also means that you can buy products and access them without ever going anywhere so sometimes you think maybe our best thing to do would be to put distribute and advertise everything online you've got to think about the impact of online distribution if we do put everything online what's the impact going to be now for me obviously the main thing i think is that older people might not have access so you've lost the massive audience straight away but because so many people can download stream and simulcast films music and tv easily things are changing you've got video on demand netflix amazon soon to be disney plus as well for music you've got spotify you've got itunes you've got google music you've got all these different things that you can do to access content online the word simulcasting if it ever comes up is when something's broadcast online and via a traditional medium at the same time so best example could be something is live in america like game of thrones and you can watch it live in the uk at 2 a.m it basically is being broadcast at the same time in two different ways so one of the impacts of all of this online distribution is something called the death of the schedule so the tv schedule used to be people used to buy magazines and newspapers and stuff with it all the time to see what was going to be on tv they used to have things like teletext where it would show what the next program was going to be and what different things were on what they're basically trying to say now is that that schedule is dead and the idea is is that you don't watch things live anymore so I think the only real people that watch TV live is if it's sport. You don't really want to watch sport later on in the day. You want to watch it when it's live on the telly. But things like Game of Thrones and other programs, you might watch it on catch up or you might record it and watch it later. Or you might just stream it in your own time. So there are still certain programs that still get big audiences. But in general, people will watch a program in their own time which suggests that the schedule, TV schedule, is dead. The effects of the technological convergence, the effects of all of this faster internet, devices that can access anything, all the streaming, the effects are basically the death of the schedule. You've got something called time shifting, which is where people watch shows in their own time. That's the technical term for it. And the main reason why they do that is because they don't have to watch adverts because it's annoying. You've got changing advertising methods. People are starting to push more towards social media and YouTube rather than using the traditional methods, which is the adverts and the breaks. Because what's the point in sticking an advert in the break of a TV show if people aren't watching it live anyway and they just fast forward it? The other thing is video on demand with Netflix and Amazon Prime. People watch TV shows on Netflix and binge watch them and they don't have any adverts in them. So there's no point in trying to advertise on a show when people are just watching it in their own time anyway. That's the end of Learning Outcome 2. Hopefully by now you understand how things can be advertised and marketed and how all the products are distributed.